It's Ketchup Packets. Hey everybody, I'm Sean. I'm Nate. And this is Ketchup Packets. Today we have another patron requested movie. We are watching the 1950 film Sunset Boulevard. This was requested by Scott, aka Blue 62. So, thank you, Scott, aka Blue 62, for requesting a movie for us. Yeah. This is a 73 year old film, Nate. Yeah, geez. Uh, I have no idea what to expect from this, including from the PG rating that I'm seeing. Yeah, well, this, has. this predates yeah. PG 13, right. right? This is like, there was pretty much just. It's for kids and everybody, G. It's for only adults, R, and it's in the middle somewhere, mm -hmm. which is PG, you know? Right. So, like, it was a wide range of stuff. I think Poltergeist was originally rated PG. Yeah. Which, that movie's pretty terrifying. It's, yeah. Like that a child. movie scared me as a kid, for yes. sure. Airplane is rated PG, and there's boobs in it. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so. Yeah. Fun times. So, that's ratings. always interesting, because it's kind of a wild card. We don't know what we're, what we're in for here. I or think, I don't. I think it was Raiders of the Lost Ark that got the PG-13 rating yeah. created because the face melting. Some yeah. parents were like, okay, right. we need something above PG to let us know this is going to be pretty hardcore. Yeah. I don't so, mean, you know, yeah. It's when you start ripping people's beating hearts out of their chest and still got kids <laughs> at the theater, I yeah. think that ends up being a problem. Well, it's interesting, though, because I think PG-13 was created in that circumstance to kind of push the boundaries of PG, and instead what it wound up doing is kind of pulling down R content instead, yeah, you know? Yeah, like a lot of R-rated stories try to, you know, sanitize themselves enough to be PG-13. Mm -hmm. But we're off course already. Yes, we sure are. This but is I an old movie. I have no idea what to even... Sunset Boulevard, I assume it takes place on a street? Well, no, it's about Hollywood. It's okay. like Sunset Boulevard. Right. It's about it's old sun Hollywood, you know? Sunset Boulevard. So I guess in a way okay. we were on topic talking about the movie industry. Yeah, right, right. right. That's all. Yeah, um, I think that I might have seen this movie, or at least parts of this movie, in a film studies class in college in 2007. So, okay, that was a while ago now, and I don't even really remember, but I think I've seen pieces of it, and yeah, I know it's about old Hollywood and like an, a, a formerly great actress, I think. Oh, okay. Know? All right, so, oh, man, and Hollywood was a, kind of a different place back then than it is mm -hmm. now in terms of you know why it's it's always cutthroat well but i think the the willingness for people to completely throw their lives away at the mercy of mm -hmm. the greatness that hollywood can offer you is like was more intense back then definitely was, and if this is so 1950 is the movie, and it's about someone who, like, is a formerly big star actress. Then she's probably, like, first wave, yeah. second wave Hollywood stars mm -hmm. actress, you know? Because, like, there's just not that much time that the industry's existed for her, there to be too many rise and falls of people, you know? Right. So she, yeah, like, might have been one of the original Hollywood stars. Silent film era. Exactly. Hollywood. Yeah, wow. So. That's kind of cool. Should we check out what this has to offer us? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Thanks again for picking this movie for us. Scott, a.k.a. Blue62. Uh, check out our Patreon, everyone else, and you can maybe pick a movie or vote in polls, or there's advanced full-length versions of our reactions. So, yeah. Let's uh, watch Sunset Boulevard. It's cool titles with the road stencils. Yeah. Cecil B. DeMille, I recognize that name. Buster Keaton. Oh, whoa. This is like pretty old. A murder has been reported from one of those great big houses in the 10,000 block. You'll read about it in the late editions, I'm sure. I'm really glad this guy's You'll explained it to us what's radio. happening. See it on television. Well, it's an older style. No, I know. My attention span isn't isn't long enough to be able to try and track all this. See, nowadays it would just show you those cops and you'd hear like this information over one yep. of their radios yep. being told to them. If so, you come to the right party. His voice is also just very nice. You see, the body of a young nice. man was found floating in the pool of her mansion with two shots in his back and one in his stomach. Probably drowned. Nobody important, really. Just a movie writer with a couple of B pictures to his credit. <laughs> They're just tossing the flash bulbs away. Okay, why does this image make me think Whoa. of The Great Gatsby? Doesn't that also end with somebody floating dead in a pool? I've never seen that either. I mean, this is the beginning, not the yeah, end. But. Right. Joseph C. Gillis, 
That's right. We come for the car. Because you're three payments behind and because we got a court order. Now come on. Oh, this car's it's getting repossessed by yeah. guys in suits. <laughs> yeah, right. That car better be back here by noon tomorrow. There's gonna be fireworks. You see fireworks. Huh. Is that what, what does that mean? Firearms. Death, yeah. Death threat? I had an original story kicking around Paramount. My agent told me it was dead as a doornail. But I knew a big shot over there who'd always hmm. like me. It's a it's like a meta story. Yeah. Look, uh, Mr. Sheldrake, could you let me have three hundred bucks yourself as a personal loan? Could I? <laughs> you Jeez. could. This year I had to mortgage the ranch so I could keep up my life insurance, so I could borrow on my insurance. Hmm. So I could pay my okay, cool. so he's not yep. gonna lend him three hundred bucks. Nope. Maybe if I hawked all my junk, there'd be enough for a bus ticket back to Ohio. Back to that thirty-five dollar a week job behind the copy desk of the Dayton Evening Post. Thirty-five dollars a week. Still open. <sighs> yeah, so I think two ninety-one is a lot of money. Bus. Yep. Uh oh. Are those the guys that want the yeah, car and he's like, driving it? I like that he he put the 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 sun blocker down, even though they're looking at the car. Yeah. Right. And they already ID'd him. Yeah, it's too late. But surely they'd rather have the money, right? I mean, That's I guess I'm at this thinking. point they'd rather have the car, you know? Yeah. And sell it for more than 300 bucks, maybe? Well, this is why you make loans with interest. Let them keep the car, and then just gotta continue to pay for the car forever. Well, that was lucky. Yeah. If ever there was a place to stash away a limping car with a hot license number. Hmm. Just rolling the dice, I guess. Yep. A neglected house gets an unhappy look. This one had it in spades. Yeah, it's foreboding. It like that old woman in yeah. Taking it out on the world because she'd been given the go-by. Think there's somebody in the house? Yeah. Weird. Oh, the butler. In here. Look, maybe I better take my car and get it off. Wipe your feet. You need 300 bucks, and that butler is oh. wearing white gloves. I would just go inside and play nice. Have him come up, man. Up the stairs. Mention that you're not who they think you are. Is no, do the opposite. Say, oh yes, I'm sorry, my, my suit is in the shop. Of course, I'm not dressed for the occasion, which will become obvious to me any moment now. I guess. With the coffin, call me. The coffin? Yes, of course, the coffin. I know all about the coffin and who's in it or who's not in it yet. I don't know about that yet. But I'll find out <laughs> as soon as I see it. So you're saying take advantage yes, of them, they're yes. immensely wealthy. Yep. Made up my mind, we'll bury him in the garden. Any city laws against that? I wouldn't know. Of course, course there's away. not. Yes, we'll do we'll do it right away if you'd like. Whoa! It's an ape. Yes, it is. It's, it's a movie about Michael Jackson. I pulled into your garage until I could get a spare. I thought this was an empty house. It is not. That's get out. The wrong thing to say, dude. I mean, sorry, you lost all you gotta do is bury a chimp, and then you got you got the car back, man. You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures. Used to be big. I am big. It's the picture that got small. Don't blame me. I, I'm not an executive, just a writer. You are writing words, words, small words. Well, you've made a rope of words and strangled this business. <laughs> but there's a microphone right there to catch the last gurgles. And Technicolor to photograph. Okay. Damn. Everybody. Bitter. Always Get lamenting out. the good old days, yep. you know? You have written pictures, haven't you? Sure have. Want a list of my credits? I love the handrail on the other side. Yeah. This is to be a very important picture. <laughs> I've written it myself. Took me years. Looks like enough for six important pictures. It's a story of Salome. I think I'll have to... Is that a handwritten it. screenplay she's got there? It looks like it, yep. Uh-huh. We made a lot of pictures together. Looks like... And you'll play... Salome. A few? 
or one very long one. Well, mm -hmm. the princess in love with a holy man. She dances the dance of the seven veils. He rejects her, so she lands his head on a golden tray, kissing his cold, dead lips. Whoa, I would see that movie. They love it every place. Sounds metal. I had no pressing engagement, except with those boys from the finance office. Yeah, you literally she can't leave. Something to drink. Why not? Car's busted. Yeah. She sat coiled up like a watch spring, her cigarette plant in a curious holder. I love I the her eyes on descriptions. Dark yeah, it's like a novel. Yeah. Like it feels like a film noir detective movie too, yeah, because totally. of the narration. Even mm -hmm. though it's like not it sure a typical scene. subject of like, oh, this girl's missing, you know? Yep. Yeah. Max. It is kind of a mystery, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm uh, pretty expensive. I get five hundred a week. I wouldn't worry about money. I'll make it worth your while. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Well, it's getting kind of late. Are you married, Mister? How are you Davis even going to get away? Single. Right. Where do you live? And why not stay in a mansion and eat caviar and drink champagne and car, help this woman with her script for five hundred dollars a week? Dude? There's a butler. Why yeah. Why you stay here? Yeah. Look, I'll come back early tomorrow. She's clearly Last lonely. Let's hang out with her. Maybe she'll Can loosen up a little bit. How did you know I was going to stay this afternoon? The bathroom is over there. I put in some towels, soap, and a toothbrush. Just ignoring that question? Nope. That's not good. And of course she had a pool. Who didn't then? Mabel Norman and John Gilbert must have... Okay, but the pool is drained, so what about the floating body? They said that was yep. after this, right? Exactly. Because they said this is a few weeks before. Yep. It was empty now. Or was it? It's only like, what, 50,000 gallons of water Something short of being a functioning pool. swimming pool. I have no idea. Make that happen. Very old chimp. Performed with the utmost seriousness. Was her life really as empty as that? Why does Babe. being, like, caring, caring about, about burying your, your pet. pet make you have an empty life? I don't get it. it was all very this is, yeah, this is my but issue with this guy's outlook. It's like, what, what, do you have a whole lot else going on here, dude? <laughs> yeah. Weren't you just begging your friends for money? This is pretty good. Even if this whole situation amounts to nothing, this is your script, dude. Yeah. Yeah, lived experience makes the best stories. Somebody had brought in all my belongings, my books, my typewriter, my clothes. What the butler? Okay, so they chose him, but how did he chose this place? What? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? It's like on? fate. What's the matter? Is there anything missing? Who said you could? Who asked you to? He's like, don't interrupt me, dude. I'm jamming. Yeah. I don't know why you should be so upset. <laughs> She's Stop surrounded by pictures of herself. It seems like a good idea if we are to work together. I feel like I recognize that picture that's on the, Look, the top of the script. organ. There's nothing in the deal about my staying here. You'll like it here. Thanks for the invitation I've got. I recognize her, those pictures of her. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, now, don't let's be small about such matters. We won't keep books. Max? They're all a little Max creepy, though, aren't they? Thing. That's just old photographs. Yeah, I guess. It's better to cut directly to John the Baptist. Cut away from me. They don't want you in every scene. They don't. Then why do they still write me fan letters every day? Why do they beg me for my photographs? Why? So it's her vanity because project. Want she wants yes, of course. No, put it back. You don't even have to improve the script. You just have to, like, Do what stroke she her wants. ego. Yeah. Yeah. And that's $500 a week. Two or three times a week, Max would haul up that enormous oil painting that had been presented to her by some Nevada chamber. Oh, and there's a movie screen behind cool. it? That's cool. Yeah. But they're, gonna, they're only going to watch her movies, though. So sure. Nicer. Sometimes as we watched, she'd clutch my arm or my hand, forgetting she was my employer. Just becoming a fan. Yeah, Excited she. About that actress up there on the screen. She does seem to be her own biggest fan. Yeah. Those imbeciles. Haven't they got any eyes? Have they forgotten what a star looks like? I'll show them. I'll be up there again. So help me. You just need to teach her how to have fun again. Oh, geez, she's like going into a trance or something. <sighs> yeah, she got real mad there Sometimes for no reason. She's stuck in the past. One heart. Spade? I wonder if these are all like, real older actors. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they are 
Technically, yeah, yeah I mean, in they're some in a sense. movie, but, you know. Is this like the poker lesson scene in Ocean's Eleven and they're playing themselves? Yeah, yeah, right. Are those his debtors? Mm-hmm. So they know he's here. Well, they suspect they're looking, they're looking for somebody. I'm not here. That's what I told you. Good. But they found your car in the garage and they're gonna tow it away. Where's the ash? That'll be just fine. But that was the whole point of all this, I thought. I think the point of it is that he's running into trouble all over the place. I mean, the car was, would be the last thing I'd give up, beside the house, right? Yeah. We don't need two cars, we have a car. Not one of those cheap new things made of chromium and spit. Masada Fuschini. Have you ever heard? Yeah, Masada she Fuschini? seems to think that he's going to be here day, permanently. She just needs a friend. She doesn't even want him to change the script. That's a dreadful shirt you're wearing. What's wrong with it? Nothing. If you work in the filling station, and I'm getting rather bored with that sport jacket and the same baggy pants. And we're just gonna buy him a bunch of clothes, new clothes. This is kind of like, like I get Vertigo, but yeah. the other way around. Mm -hmm. Here's some camels hair, but I'd like you just to feel this is Vicuna. Of course, it's a little more expensive. The camels hair will do. This is all about. Well, as long as the lady's paying for it, why not take the Vicuna? There you go. Yeah. This is, a, a this is all about the way that a person will compromise their values and their integrity because they need a job, you know? Yeah, So it's yeah, about exactly. the Hollywood industry. That's true, yeah. A great big package of rain. In exchange for, you know, lavishness and stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, this can't possibly be forever, right? I mean, I mean it seems how much like longer will he live, you know? <laughs> what does forever mean? I guess... <laughs> I mean, all he has to do is say, okay, I'm done editing your script, or I quit. Yeah. Right? Right? But he has no other options, is what I was saying. It's like, he'll compromise himself like this because he needs employment of some kind. Yeah. This is the only thing available. Hey, what's this with the door? There isn't any lock. There are no locks anywhere in this house, sir. Okay. Why is that? Did you never notice that before, man? There's no knobs, either. A doctor suggested it. A doctor. Madame's doctor. Madame has moments of melancholy. She got enough out of it. She's not forgotten. She still gets those fan letters. I would look too closely at the postmarks. They're old. You sent them. Oh. Is that it? They're just off in the same place. It's quarter past ten. What time are they supposed to get here? Oh. You're the other guests. There are no other guests. We don't want to share this night with other people. This is for you and me. How did she, oh. like, Hold me tighter. just immediately a guy who showed up she fell in love with? Is she that lonely or what? Yes. I think so. That's dangerous. Yeah. Well, she's... She's obviously not mentally well. She's, you know, living in the past. She's a shut-in. Mm -hmm. She's depressed and viciously lonely. And this guy just stumbles in. Yeah. He's a writer. It's the wrong driveway to pull yeah. into. Right. Has it ever occurred to you that I may have a life of my own? That there, there may be some girl that I'm crazy about? <laughs> she does not like to hear that. Nope. Trying to say is that I'm all wrong for you. You want to He doesn't Somebody really have anything going on, and he doesn't have a girl, so far as we know. No. Say it. Say it. Woo! That just took a left turn. <laughs> was that. Do you think that was scripted, or do you think. I don't know. Because that was pretty. I mean, he's not used to dressing like this, so yeah. either way, it fits well in the also, story. Also, there was something kind of still kind of hooking him there, you know? Mm -hmm. Fans, you all know Joe Gillis, the well-known screenwriter, uranium smuggler, and life dad is <laughs> Nice. Was that ever solved? No. No. Oh, hey, is that what's-her-name? Yep. Betty Schaefer, Sheldrake's office? Sure, base is loaded. Wait a minute. This is the woman I love. What's going on? Who was loaded? 
Don't worry, <laughs> I didn't say you could have my girl. Oh, this is shop talk. Now, if I got you correctly, there's a short stretch of my fiction. That guy needs to chill. We could make some paper boats and have a regatta. Or we could turn on the shower full blast. How about capturing the kitchen and barricading the door? Wait, are you actually yeah. hitting on her now? Twelve years in the Burmese jungle, I'm starving, Lady Agatha. Oh my god. What is happening? This Jesus, is like, like so fast. Is she not one of the hosts of this no, party? I think they're acting out a scene, maybe? What? That is... No, we must be strong. You're still wearing the uniform of the Cold Spring Gods. Yeah, they're, they're acting out a scene. They are, but, but yeah. yeah. Highly inappropriate. Yeah, if her boyfriend saw that, he'd freak out. You won't. Seems like kind of a beta. You'll be waiting for me. No, don't, don't. Cut that. Put in all my old clothes, the ones I came with. And my typewriter. I'll have somebody pick them up. I have no time to do anything now. The doctor is here. Uh oh. Uh oh. What's going on? Mom got the razor from your room and she cut her wrists. <gasps> what? Oh. Whoa! That's pretty hardcore. Don't race upstairs. The musicians mustn't know what happened. Man. This is some intense subject matter. Yeah, it is. What kind of a silly thing was that to do? To fall in love with you, that was the idiotic thing. I love the, yeah, the, why shot, you... the reflection shot. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, that was silly, though, of her to do that. She just decided that any man who was fortunate enough to meet her would mm -hmm. fall in love with her. Yep. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Oh, no. That's a healthy way to get him to yeah, stay. it's very, very bad. Yeah, this is making me uncomfortable because uh, she's using standard abuser manipulation tactics in order to get him to feel guilty and uh, pretend that he likes her. Yeah. <laughs> when she's pretty unpleasant to him, except for <laughs> spending her money on him. Not to like respecting his boundaries and all sorts of other things. I think I've maybe been reading this whole movie wrong this whole time so far. What do you mean? I just was like, dude, she's hooking you up, man. It's like old five hundred dollars, you know, like all this stuff I was saying before. It's like, You've wait, come around. She's, she's quite. This is all very, very unhealthy. I'm sorry to bother you again, but I've confirmed the number. I must speak to Mr. Gillis. He's not here. Yep. Well, Isolating him from his friends and family. Mm -hmm. She's not really his friend, but obviously they were hitting it off, right? Yeah, she's a new acquaintance. How long has he been there for, do you think, now? You really gonna send that script to I mean, I'm not sure. The pool is full. Yeah, but and she said she was gonna do that. That's yeah. a one-day project, right? Sure. I'm not just selling the script, I'm selling me. DeMille always said I was his greatest star. When did he say it, Norma? Yeah, that... Yeah. Times change. All right, it was quite a few years ago. But the point is, I never looked better in my life. You know why? Because I've never been as happy in my life. <laughs> Oh boy. And she's putting all that on him. Yeah, this feels like a decent time skip of like, yeah. you know, this isn't like the next day or even right. like a week later. This is like, feels like, you know, like a month. Like they've fallen into kind of a routine now. Sure. Dark windows. I got him all hopped up about it. He thinks it could be made into something. Okay, where's the cash? Where's the story? I bluffed it out with Yeah, he just yeah. needs some way to make money before he yeah, can get out of this. Right. But I tell you, this is half sold. As a matter of fact, I've given up writing altogether. Mr. Gillis, if you please. You see, now I'm a trophy boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. To a horrible. I guess. Like I was trying to say, she's not that horrible. She's she's yeah, no, damaged. Yeah. Horrible's not the right she's word. I would go with not unpleasant. Sure. Yeah. I don't want to be a reader all my life. I want to write. I'm sorry if I crossed you up. You sure have. So long. Hmm. Well, you know he wants to do that, too. But he knows, like, I can't... Can't leave can't. Norma. Yep. Audiences don't know somebody sits down and writes a picture. They think the actors make it up as they go along. Open your eyes. 
Oh, look at that! Uh, it's a pretty good impression, though. I mean, it's a pretty distinct yeah. whole yeah. thing. <laughs> yes, it is. I know, if but... If you're a performer, you can probably do it. I'm a performer. I have a YouTube channel. Fair enough. <laughs> you know better than to interrupt me. Paramount is calling. Who? Paramount Studios. They're gonna make the movie. There's someone by the name of Gordon Cole. He says it's very important. The mm -hmm. idea of having some assistant call me. Say I'm busy and hang up. Very good, madam. No, wait, 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 wait. Duh! No, you have to play hard to get. I've waited 20 years for this call. Now the mill can wait until I'm good and ready. It's funny how terrifying she still is, even when she has About a fake mustache on. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Mr. DeMille shooting? Stage 18, Miss Desmond. Thank you, Jonesy. And teach your friends some manners. Without me, you wouldn't have any job because without me, there wouldn't be any Paramount Studio. You're right, Miss Desmond. Go on, next. An old timer who appreciates the old stars. Norman Desmond's coming in to see Mr. DeMille. Norman Desmond. Wait a minute. Hi, welcome. Draw your sword and raise that drape with us. It's always so trippy to me when there's like shots like this of the whole filming crew set up. Yeah. Because like this there's, is a movie, so there's another one of these crews right. behind the camera that we're watching, you know. It's... I hate to think where that puts me. I could be our father. Very sorry, Mr. DeMille. Could just as easily be, you know, they're setting up for the next. Oh no, but there's a whole other thing. It's like nights exactly. and stuff. Yeah. You didn't know Norma Desmond as a lovely little girl of 17. More okay. Courage and wit and heart. So that's when her career was mm -hmm. about. Understand, she was a terror to work with. Only toward the end. You know, a dozen press agents working overtime can do terrible things to the human spirit. Yeah, I believe no it. kidding. Yep. You read the script, of course. Yes, I did. Then you could have picked up the script on yourself. What is this? I don't play innocent. Somebody named uh, Gordon Cole. Gordon Cole. And if you hadn't been pretty darn interested in that script, he wouldn't have tried to get me on the telephone. Okay, so oh, who no. was calling her then? Now, why don't you just sit up here in my chair and make yourself comfortable? Hmm? Yeah, and he has no yeah, idea what she was talking her. about. Yeah. yeah. He did not even get word of some script mm -hmm. from her. Microphone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she can't stand it. Look at the size of that light. Woo! Imagine how hot it must be, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. There we go, the adoration yeah. she craves. Mm -hmm. Have you been calling Norma Desmond? Yes, Mr. DeMel. It's that car of hers, an old Isada for Sheeny. Her chauffeur drove it in on the lot the other day. It looks just right for the Crosby picture. We want to rent it for a couple of weeks. Oh, so they just want to rent the car. Mm. Is that guy in 12 Angry Men? He did look like that guy in 12 Angry Men. He did kind of look like him. Because he looks like the dad from Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Turn that light back where it belongs. Oh, that's a this cool shot. Be, yeah. You turn the light off from her and everyone just disperses. Yeah. What's the matter there? Nothing. <laughs> I just didn't realize what it would be like to come back to the old studio. I had no idea how much I missed He's like, oh god, I really don't want to tell her this. I think she lost her sense of humor. Yes. Why don't you just sit here and watch? You know, pictures have changed quite a bit. Alright, let's go. Yeah, so she, if she wanted to get yeah. her movie made, would they not even have sound? Like, she would be opposed oh. to that, probably? Yeah, probably. You see those offices there, Mr. Gillis? It used to be Madame's dressing room. I had the upstairs. You see where it says Reader's Department? I remember my walls were covered with black patent leather. So he was her assistant mm -hmm. even then? Hey, here's a funny car Gordon Cole was talking about. Yeah. Mind if we look it over? What's so funny about it? <laughs> They're just going to take it and start using it for a movie. Right? It's not Madame they want. It's her car they want to rent. What? 
Mm. <laughs> He's furious on her behalf. I love how devoted yeah. to her he yeah. is. Goodbye, Mom. How'd it go? It couldn't have gone better. It's practically set. But he has to finish this picture first. I'm the elect. Yeah, so even he knows he can't get break her heart. Tell him he can get another old car someplace. I'll buy him five old cars if necessary. <laughs> yeah, he's like, whatever I gotta do to never have to deal with her again. Yeah. You know, I've lost half a pound since Tuesday. Good. I was a little worried about the line in my throat. This woman has done wonders with it. Good. What do you think she's got? A bunch of surgeries? Or just, like, I I don't know, cosmetic? Whatever the cutting edge techniques at the time were. I don't know anything about yeah, the that's true. history of beauty treatments. I was playing hooky every evening along in there. It made me think of when I was 12 and used to sneak out on the folks to see a gangster picture. <laughs> this time it yeah, was. He's got to sneak out of the house. Yeah, Jeez. Try and write. You know, in all seriousness, this is really good. It's fun writing with you. Well, thanks. Uh oh. Mad about the boy. What, are you going to be Who's jealous? Come on, yeah. you've got a fiancé. Middle-aged lady. Very foolish. Very generous. I'll say. This is solid gold. I gave her some advice. On solid this. gold? Wow. I realize that. I had no way of recognizing at the beginning, but what I keep wondering is, is he the dead guy in the pool at the beginning? I think that that is the... the idea. I'm not inquiring where Mr. Gillis goes every night. Why don't you? I'm writing a script, and I'm gonna finish it, no matter what. It is just that I'm greatly worried about Nana. Sure you are. Uh, about yeah. what exactly? That she's gonna freak out? <laughs> Why would you ever think she would do something like that? She's so chill. What happens when she finds out? She never will. That is my job. Yeah. It has been for a long time. I think the butler is my favorite character in this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I made her a star, and I cannot let her be destroyed. You made her a star. Yes. I directed all her early films. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. There were three young directors who showed promise in those days. T.W. Griffith, Cecil B. DeMille, and Max von Meyerling. Which one are you? And she's turned you into a star. Was I who asked to come back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. This is like... I could have continued my career. Only I found everything... Bruce Wayne's butler. What's his name? Alfred? Alfred, there we go. You really had to <laughs> yeah, ask that? Yeah, I just... It, I, I just couldn't think of it. He was her first husband? What? Why Whoa, are you still here? Why are you still here? That's not like Alfred. <laughs> One of those directors he named, D.W. Griffith, is the guy who made Birth of a Nation. That, that oh, clan great. Movie. Yes, wonderful. I mean, it's a very historically significant movie. It is. Is it a woman? I know it's a woman. Who is she? Why can't I ask you? I must know. I mean, yes, but no, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he didn't really do anything. He's working on a... I don't think she'd be so frustrated about him meeting another woman as he she is that he's working on a different script yeah think about that betrayal untitled love story oh, oh no. no let's see I like the composition of that shot mm-hmm what's matter She's like still. Hey, wake up. Look at how still she's dying? being. Yeah, that's creepy. Oh, what? I'm sorry. Whoa! You guys up too late, right? Oh, so still. Yeah. No, oh, she what was staring it? into him. What's wrong? He wants me to come on to Arizona. He says it only costs two dollars to get married there. It would kind of save us a honeymoon. Oh, that's that's not what she wants. She wants a romantic wedding. It's expensive. I'm not in love with him anymore, that's all. Oh, boy. You did? Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. That's Come all it takes. On, dude. That's all it takes. 
Oh, well, nuts to Artie. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Who cares about him anyway? Betty Schaefer engaged to Artie Green, as nice a guy as ever lived. And she was in love with me. Uh, so he's as nice a guy as ever lived? So yep. that makes you not very good people then. No, everyone's bad in this movie. You always pass judgment on the characters and the things we watch, Nate. Yeah. Try to empathize. Sure. People are flawed. This is Betty Schaefer. You must forgive me for calling you so late, but I really feel it's my duty. It's about Mr. Gillis. You do know Mr. Gillis. What is she gonna do? Who are you? What do you want? What business is of yours anyway? Yeah. Miss Schaefer. It's I'm extremely possessive. Schaefer. It's I'm all... You a great deal of misery. I mean... I understand, but he's not in a great position to be like a suitor for a young lady in 1950, though. Maybe she's just trying to warn her about that. Oh, I'm sure that's what it is. It's purely for her. <laughs> it's, it's for Betty's own good, right? Well, but that's, that's the that's the angle, though. You know. Yes. I did because I need you. I need you as I've never needed you before. Look at me. Look at my hands. Look at my face. Look under my eyes. Does she know they're not making her movie yet? I don't think so. I bought myself a revolver. I did. I did. I stood in front of that mirror, but I couldn't make myself do it. I see. She's looking for a more surefire way. Yeah. Well, she's. This is. Feels like cries for help. Yeah. Like. If and that's why she couldn't front, do it with the gun. You buy yourself yet. a revolver and stand in front of the mirror and you almost do it, but you don't. And then you tell other people about it. Mm hmm Betty, let me come along with you, please. No, I'll be all right. Your friend recognizes this is a shady situation. Yeah, for real. Your let, friend's there. Let her come. What are you going to do, Joe? What are you going to do? What are you going to do what? I'm gonna answer the door. But the gun was on the bed right there. Did you see that? No, I didn't even notice. Yeah. Older woman who's well to do. A younger man who's not doing too well. Can you figure it out yourself? No. All right, I'll give you a few more clues. No. What else is there to figure I don't need out? Any of this. I never got those telephone calls, and I've never been in this house. I'll get your things together, and let's get out of here. <laughs> She just doesn't want to think about this yeah, ever. She's like, this is weird. Back to a one room apartment I can't pay for. Back to a story that may sell and very possibly will not. If you love me, Joe. Look, sweetie. See, this is all a symbolism for like young actresses in Hollywood. His, yeah. you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it with that. I don't think there's reading too much into something like this. That's. Someone who genuinely cares about you comes and sees it and they're like, yeah. walk away from this. It's and you're like, walk away for what? You know? Yeah. Like, this way, Betty. Okay, well, Norma will yeah. be happy with that Turns, outcome. Turned her away. That is the saddest and, you know, made sure to cheat on her husband, really help I mean, her cheat on her. Yeah, that was like, first. I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe a moment of passion. Who knows how far that actually went? But. Yeah. <sighs> You're being an asshole, dude. I mean, he's just showing her where he lives, and she's like, "Give all this up," and he's like, "I don't want to." I don't know. It's I don't know that he's necessarily yeah, being an I mean, asshole. I sort of think it's more like, like, do you love me or not? And it's like, well, look at all this stuff. Look. How many things can I show you right, to prove saying, to you that this is worth more than you are? Okay, I guess. Yeah, you know? yeah. Right. I see what you mean. I have a pool. Look at all this stuff in the other column. Yeah, right. <laughs> Stacked so high compared to the very short column that you are. Yeah, yeah. Brutal. I see. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, see, he's very unhappy about having to have done that. He was not actually... He was trying to convince her to leave. Yeah, I see. Oh wow, that's scary. Yep. I love this. She can't see herself in the mirror. No, but but we in the see movie her she's reflection. supposed to be. Able yes, to, I know yeah. it's excellent. What are you doing, Joe? Oh, 
only his old suit. Packing up to leave. So maybe he's gonna go try to get in touch with Betty. He's realizing she was right. No, you're not. I think he's doing the only a, a decent thing for the first time in a long time. He convinced Betty to marry her fiance, right? Yeah, yeah, I see. Life but shows. so he realized she's right, but he can't go yeah, be with no, her either. No, he doesn't want to be here anymore either. And you know I'm not afraid to die. It's between you and yourself. Yeah. At some point, you have to say it's on you. Yeah. You know? I suppose you don't think I have the courage. Yoink! Well, yeah, don't have the yeah, he can just, it's just in her open hands. The audience left 20 years ago, now face it. That's a lie! Jesus. No, they don't. That was a hardcore thing to say. He's been wanting to say a lot of this stuff for a long time, I think. Judy only wanted to rent your car. What did what? DeMille didn't have the heart to tell you. None of us has had the heart. He's gonna shoot him. Max is? I think so. Tell her there isn't going to be any picture. There aren't any fan letters except the ones you write. That isn't true. So why isn't he still married to her if he's so devoted to her? I will take Mr. Gillis's packs to the car. He's probably uh, just like, dude, you're making yeah. my life harder. Why are you doing yeah, that? Yeah, right. He just blew up my whole spot and then you're about to leave. Is that what we're doing? Norma, you're a woman of 50. Now grow up. There's nothing tragic about being 50. The insanity in her eyes is really yeah, it intense. Really is unsettling. Ooh. Ooh. Man. No. No. I mean, she's the one waving the gun around. No. I don't know if yeah. it's gonna get to Max's hands. I feel like the factor of her having the gun makes it a little no. bit too obvious that she's gonna be the one to pull the trigger. Oh Boom. my god, you're right. Never mind. Yeah, oh. well. And Max is gonna take the fall? Maybe. It's dawn now, and they must have photographed me a thousand times. Fishing them out with sticks. And they got a couple of pruning hooks from the garden and fished me out. There we go. That's... Uh, Perfect. Funny forensics will love that. By this time, the whole joint was jumping. Cops, reporters, neighbors, passers-by. Oh, her audience is back. What we do is we get in Los Angeles when they open a supermarket. Even the newsreel guys came roaring in. Here was an item... They only care again when something terrible has mm -hmm. happened. As day breaks over the murder house, Norma Desmond, famous star of yesteryear, is in a state of complete mental shock. You just dictate the article over the phone? Yeah. I guess so. This guy, where did you meet him for the first time? Where did he come from? Who is he? Did you hate Dude, she's him? completely broken down at this, like this point. Before? Yeah, where's Max? He's not even able to, like, did you catch yeah. head off these questions. Newsreel men are here with the cameras. Tell them to go fly a kite. This is no time for cameras. No, Miss Desmond. Cameras. Oh, boy. Yes, she is. It's quite a performance, her. No kidding. Her, she's Cameras. very unsettling. Everything will be I think she is Thank about you. to be institutionalized. You'll pardon me, gentlemen. For I'm losing her mind? Yes. What's happening see, one flew over the what cuckoo's what nest? I've cuckoo's. not seen that. Oh. There's a character, I think that's the movie where there's a character that's a, an old actress who still thinks that she's famous and she's in oh, a yeah. mental institution. Yeah. Lights. Oh, there we go. I'm ready. All right. Cameras. Everybody's just yeah, watching and participating. Yeah. The dream she had clung to so desperately had enfolded her. The narrator is dead for these events, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio making a picture again. You don't know how much I've missed all of you. And I promise you I'll never desert you again. Because after the movie, <laughs> you'll make another picture and another picture. You see, this is my life. It always will be. Nothing else. Just she just wants her past back. It's too late. Now she's a murderer. People out there in the dark. I guess people are finally paying attention. I'm ready for my mm -hmm. 
What do you gotta do? That's the famous There's line, time. right? Mr. DeMille, I'm ready yeah. for my close-up. Yep. Well, we don't have that kind of focus. It's you're too close. <laughs> oh, all right. Run it again. Ta-da! I love the the Paramount movie about that takes place largely on the Paramount. Yeah. Like, well, Sunset Boulevard. Huh. What did you that think, was Nate? Really something. Yeah. It. That movie had a lot of different themes going on in it. Definitely. And I think that there, you were right, there is a piece of it that's like kind of a commentary on Hollywood and how you kind of get hooked into a certain lifestyle and then you're willing to sort of like forget or leave behind other things. You compromise you yourself, compromise you know, yourself. Yeah, you give yeah. pieces of yourself away. I think Hollywood generally, but specifically people like the young woman Norma would have been at the start mm -hmm. of her career, you know, like she is that, that's sort of the story it was trying to tell through Joe's like arrangement with her, I guess. I don't know. That, maybe I'm reading too much into that, but I definitely saw those parallels all throughout it. I think there's pieces of that. I, the check. one, okay. the one thing that I maybe disagree with that analysis on is how much. Uh, resistance he put up at the beginning of being presented in this situation. Sure, sure, yeah, and right? those actresses are very eager. They to get wanted started, that. Yeah. It was her dream that was that had dissipated. That was her problem in the first place. So the idea that he, you know, and the, there was the whole beginning. My whole commentary was like, dude, maybe just like go along with this for a yeah. little while, make your money, mm -hmm. you know, keep this old like unpleasant like woman company for a while and live in her beautiful house while you're like financially struggling and exactly just, right is this know, really so bad yeah it doesn't seem so bad but then you once you realize that he i don't think he was ever rightfully paid a dime no he, i mean yeah he said he never got given I mean, any cash yeah. he was just gonna be you know an account or something like that but yeah that was never made clear and yeah i so i see what you're saying about how like there's you know he his reluctance doesn't quite match up to that lens but he had already been trying for a while, like, oh, I'm gonna be a writer, I'm gonna try, and that was his eagerness, and, like, he clearly was passionate about writing, mm -hmm. but he'd sort of, you know, hit some dead ends and some, you know, had trouble finding success, and then all of a sudden, she's like, I got a gig, come write, you know, do what yeah. you, the thing you're passionate about, so maybe that's, it's about, you know, like, young starlets coming out to act, and they can't break in, and then someone's like, hey, come act for me, and you're like, well, this isn't really the acting yeah. I had in mind, right. and it's making yeah, me compromise yeah. myself in the meantime, but I guess I'll do it, I want to be an actor, you know, so... That's true. I don't know, I think it's, there's, there's and, a parallel there. It, yeah, the project was specifically some... Well, okay, and I will also posit, he was writing the whole time, none of mm -hmm. his stuff was getting picked up. And I th don't think that he thought for a second that Norma's movie was going to get picked up by anybody. No, he was like, this is, In his mind, as he was reading it, he was like, this is got awful right I'm yeah not gonna... but it was technically a writing job and so you could mm -hmm. use it uh, as an avenue to get your real writing underway and so you know it's not he but he wasn't doing it for the craft of the writing it he was no. doing it to try to get a job that paid well because he needed that and mm -hmm. you know it was, it was a connection I guess too but I mean he was doing he it to try it. and keep his car yeah. that's what he was doing it all for. the dude wanted was his car back <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's I I feel like the themes of like the Norma is a she is a lonely person mm -hmm. she is a narcissist completely surrounded by her own sense of uh, self-importance and yeah. like and like a need to be loved so much so that her ex-husband Butler is writing letters from fake people mm -hmm. to her to try and make her so, feel yeah. important so that she doesn't uh, harm herself right 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 this is that's how that unstable is, she is there's a very serious like sense of and like the the type of trap that he was was not a physical type it mm -hmm. was an emotional type it was a yeah. psychological type where he clearly had feelings for Betty as her name right yeah yeah and like but couldn't even escape the house for a night he escaped every night but yeah, you, but not honestly. Yeah, he had to lie about it. Right, right? he had to sneak he couldn't, away. He couldn't walk. He couldn't and then walk Butler away. Butler was from like, that "Dude, situation. you're causing trouble by leaving." By leaving, yeah. yeah. And that's like, 
not healthy. That's not healthy. You should no, be able yeah. to go out to a New Year's Eve party, mm -hmm. you know, or something once right. in a while, you know. Or to a screenwriting partnership. Yeah. yeah. But that was clearly turning into something more. I mean, her yeah. jealousy was kind of warranted, but her relationship to Joe in the first place was not cool or healthy or... Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah. Was... She was un incapable of practicing self-observation. Right, like, uh, Max is such an interesting piece of all this. Like, if he's her first husband and she'd been married three times, and he's clearly still so devoted to her and to spending all his energy caring for her and making sure she's okay, so how are they not still married? Is it her complete self-absorption made her decide to cast him aside and yes, get think, a new husband, but he was going to stick around anyway? I think that he was devoted to her and could, and like also just invested in her happiness mm -hmm. from a, from the beginning. Yeah. Right? He made her first couple few movies and stuff like that. Right. And like she cast him aside because her star rose beyond him. Okay, right? sure. And as her narcissism grew, she became insufferable to any living human being who was in her vicinity for more than 10 minutes. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it seems and like that was the so, case. So, like, he's the one through line through all of it and can't, could not stand to see her. He couldn't stand to see her unhappy. That is his sort of, that is the role that he has then, I guess, resigned to in his life is to make I mean, sure he that didn't she... seem he seemed to be like facing forward you right. know firmly he didn't seem resigned to his you're role right. at all like he I, was he uh, like if you're gonna not gonna have me anymore i'll become your butler instead because i'm still devoted to you yeah you know? and like maybe i put that wrongly that's why i think he's like my favorite character in the movie mm -hmm. because like first of all he was lying to her about a lot of things in right. order to like protect like he decided her. Decided it was for her own good. Yes, and which isn't necessarily great, but he he had a conviction and he stuck to it, and that and he stuck to it until the bitter end. <laughs> it's noble gaslighting. Yes, right. Yes, there's there is a nobility to his character that no other character shared in yeah. the movie. It's true. You know, like. And even like even the director who was kind of caught off guard by her showing up, thinking that it was like he was, she was talking about. She wanted his her movie. He mm -hmm. wanted he, he wanted, wanted to, rent to her make car. her movie. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted to rent her car. Even he had cast her aside at a certain point. Right. And I mean, like, when she aged out of Hollywood, yes. that's a thing that still happens today. Women, yeah. Get you know, you get the the teen role until you're like in your late twenties, and then all of a sudden you're getting offered moms, and it's just like yeah. there's no in between, and people just I don't know. And it's like I'm sure we can't do intelligent commentary on that issue. No, but no, thing. but it is a thing, and like a lot of the people on the lot recognized her and considered her to be like important mm -hmm. as as actors who are currently in the in the public, like. In, in the, what do you call, like, Working the actors. current moment. Yeah, yes. In the, in the, yeah, contemporary actors. Yeah, they considered her important enough to put the spotlight on her, right? Yeah. And didn't think that that was weird to pull the spotlight Well, but that over. was an old timer up in the rafters who, like, so he yeah, would have been somebody the, that had been around for a long time. The young actors who were in, dressed up in the armor and stuff still so went over and right, were like, yeah. you know, big fan. They'd you know? been watching her stuff. It's what made yeah. them want to be actors. They're the new, the new class, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's the tip top directors who are just like how do i get her out of here yeah. without throwing they've a moved fit, on you know exactly. yeah don't even give her like don't even attempt to give her like a bit part to yeah. get to boost the, your movie yeah. be like hey norma desmond's got a walk on in right. this exactly you know? and she might not like that but it it'll be it'll get her out of the house at least like she <laughs> no it's true she wouldn't money. she wouldn't want to do any kind of a, no. a bit part she would want to be the star yeah. and have no sound <laughs> yeah that's true so it's like can't i got work a, with I, got, I got a perfect for you we'll do well you'll be center center camera for uh two seconds and you have no lines you don't have to say anything no sound that's what happened you. at the end of the movie there during her uh, arrest for yeah murder. that's that's really interesting they got the cameras out I feel so bad for Betty, though. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's young. Betty will land on her feet. This she's is fine. Actually, she's got her fiance. She's okay. Seems to be kind of a through line for me in these in these older movies that there's kind of like this this relationship that's happening, and then this like this other woman who's kind of normal and interested <laughs> and like maybe more 
like would be a healthier relationship for yeah. like the the protagonist male character and just like always gets the short end of the stick right yeah it's true it's, that's yeah. i mean we it's haven't seen in vertigo too right yeah i guess that's the only other example so far but <laughs> yeah, i guess well we'll have to see how Men often that didn't have like up. a whole lot of didn't have any women in it did yes it? No. so not really all right well does that do it for sunset boulevard nate i mean it was like, a good old movie yeah we could we could talk about this forever old hollywood and everything but yeah, yeah. i think i think that's that's it for me thanks for picking this movie for us scott aka blue six two it was fun to watch a 73-year-old film. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks for watching with us, everybody. Uh, until next time, I'm Sean. I'm Nate. This is Ketchup Packets.